How's it going, everybody? April 24th of 2025, we got the announcement of a new prototype radio potentially hitting the market, the Lab 599TX1000. Now, if you've been following my channel for a while, you know I don't generally get in on the speculation train on some of these announcements but i found this one interesting because this advertises to be a vhf uhf and hf transceiver and it's an sdr now it's also one of the first times i'm seeing a color screen with a lab 599 radio which again i have the tx 500 and i really like it now, the radio doesn't straight out say that it's going to be 100 watts, but I'm guessing it's going to be somewhere from 20 to 100 watts, given the pictures that we're going to see, which makes it sound like a base station radio. But let's look at some of the features of this. It's still in the prototype phase. In fact, that's one of the key things that we should all remember is that this is a prototype. That doesn't mean it's coming out tomorrow or anything like that. And we, we don't know exactly when it's coming out, but it's going to feature a spectrum and a waterfall, such as a thing you'd expect with an SDR, a dual receiver. So A, B, A plus B type of control, if you want to go back and forth. Um, it could be full duplex. We don't know yet. Don't know anything about that yet. Uh, SWR power meter, sure. Automatic and manual notch filter and a controllable AGC, which is an automatic gain control, something you're, you're going to expect to have. Have. band map with automatic mode switching i don't know what that means except for maybe um, while you're tuning it switches between cw and single sideband and that whole thing digital noise reduction something that comes along with sdrs that you'd expect cat control so usb com port of some kind um, usb operation as well as it says there rds cw ridi decoder self-tuning and gaussian filter so I'm not sure what RDS is, but CW and RIDI I'm sure familiar with. An SWR graph for plotting. So if you had an antenna and you weren't sure how you were doing, you could use it that way. Calling out a spectrum analyzer specifically is interesting because that's actually like a tool that we use for looking at uh, different signals that it's receiving. So that might go along the lines of having the SWR graph plotting capability and having a spec an of some kind as well. Now, FT8 and FT4 receiver and transmitter implying you're going to be able to operate it directly on the radio. And we'll take a little look around. I, I haven't looked at the I.O. ports, and I don't know that it has USB for like a keyboard and a mouse, but you might want something like that. SSTV decoder. That's pretty cool. I, I, I like the idea of being able to just decode and see an ST, SSTV image at any time as, as they come along. So maybe hypothetically you could have a second band, your B band on 14.230, for instance, and you could be receiving SSTV. I don't know. Now, it, I, I don't use all QSO.ru, but at the same time, this is saying that it will do FT8 and FT4 uploading. This also advertises that it has some kind of a network capability. I think Wi-Fi was mentioned because there's a couple of pages that mention this. And if I didn't already mention this, this announcement came out on pileupdx.com. This is a website that I have purchased things through and I do get their newsletter and I, I saw this come along. So um, this is kind of where the announcement was made, which you'd expect it might have been made on their website, which they do have a you know, forward facing website, which kind of would have been a little bit more what I've expected, but who knows? SSB and FM scanner mode. Again, this does VHF, UHF, so scanner mode's kind of handy. Whisper beacon mode as well. Okay, if you can do FT8 things, why not? SDHC, SDXC, and SDHC memory card support up to 600 gigabytes. Sorry, that's my, my bad. It's 16 gigabytes. I don't think this is real. I, I think that's going to be changed. Data voice reco recorder with playback, so you can do like a CQ call over and over again. Smart AGC, taking into account human hearing characteristics. I would love to see it. Never seen that before, at least nothing called out like that. And the TXXO is a, it's a stable clock, basically. Something, that, again, that you do with like uh, some kind of a source, like GPS, as this mentions. So that's nice to have. Uh, a stable clock is good as well, particularly for VHF, UHF. Wi-Fi operation, there it is. And the ability to sync to time servers like NTP, which is pretty good as well. So if you had a network time NTP server in your home, you could just use that if you wanted to. Hypothetically, speculation, right? There is some kind of a remote control mic and a digital self-identification beacon. Don't know much about that. But you can see there's a little rough on the images there. I can't really make out everything. Some of the controls are pretty straightforward to see. But the product page, which is already on pileupdx.com, does have more images. And, and when you go into this, let, let's, let's click on those guys a little bit. So this looks like a real unit that has a background remove uh, filter ran across it because you can kind of see the edges where buttons are sticking up or 
where something is sticking up. There are nine buttons on the bottom for control instead of it being potentially not a touchscreen. So just have buttons on the bottom, which don't necessarily correspond to what I'm seeing. Yeah, so you got a preamp, an attenuator, an AGC, DNR, noise blanker, notch, S squelch maybe, an EQ, fast, maybe for waterfall speed, mute. And I'm just looking across the top to see if I can see anything interesting. I see power and SWR. I can't make out the numbers on the very left of that, that fake needle look, but it is in 10 meters and 20 meters, it looks like. So interesting. Let's see if we can see some more here. So this is what looks like the lineup. And, and here's a size of comparison against the Lab 599TX500, which we have. You, you can purchase that. That vertical handheld is on their website, but um, I have not seen one in the wild, at least stateside. And so there's the comparison. It's it's a kind of wide and not as deep as like a 7300 or something along those lines. And there are no buttons on the top. You can see that that's just a grill. Now, that could be a mock-up, but I think that this is a real image. I think this looks like a real radio of some kind. Unfortunately, I was not able to find an I.O. picture, uh, even though you do have a, looks like a mic port on the very left, a key port, and a phone, so headphones or something along those lines. So yeah, interesting. Uh, I don't know. Don't know what to expect other than it did make the rounds of websites and blogs I have never really heard of before, like Simon the Wizard. So he, he was Johnny on the spot with this one, as well as the Sparky's blog has a, an image that I have not, I don't think that was on, was that on the pileup? No, see, I have a feeling that the pileup image, the one you see here, actually comes from this uh, Sparky's blog or or that same, they were using the same image. The difference is that pileup did a background remove on it because what's in the background? The handheld, <laughs> the handheld that I haven't seen that you can actually purchase, unless I'm I'm totally wrong. Maybe Maybe you can purchase it. If we go to Lab 599, yeah. Yeah, see... Um, I, I only see two items or one item that you can purchase and that's the TX 500. The battery pack has not been available. Um, this new base station is not available and the handheld that is in a ton of the marketing that you can see in the background here is also not available. And, and that's something that actually got, uh, called out a bit by Reddit. I, one of the first things I saw when I searched for lab 599 TX 1000 was the mention that like, guys, just make the battery and and calling out prototype stage. Sometimes Reddit can be a, a little curmudgeony uh, when it comes to so some of that stuff, but but generally I don't think they're wrong in this case, right? It's a prototype radio, although it looks like it's at least in some kind of a mock-up form. I guess I should go back here, and the images all look the same across the board. Yeah, they're they're literally all a screenshot of the same thing, meaning the frequencies have not changed. Power is showing thirty percent. And I think they're all built on the same thing that you see pretty much everywhere. If I could get a better image on that, that would be slick. Let's see if we can do that. Yeah, 30%, 20 words per minute. And they all seem to say that as well. 30, 20, 30, 20. And then my curiosity is what does that say there? Oh, that's a different frequency. Okay. Don't know if those are, you know, that, that looks like, kind of like a real image, but that could be a mock-up as well because how do you get that background, right? That, that fuzzy background. So I don't know. Reddit was uh, was alive with with uh, speculation. Where was the one that l looks expensive? You know, it looks like it could be. Nothing on power or price. Nope. A lot of folks here. A couple of them said they'll take the uh, this over the, this at 20 watts. They take over the FTX One F, which is the Yesu QRP radio that's coming out. I find that interesting. I don't know that I would share that that same opinion, but. I'm really hoping for at least 20 watts. You'd be amazed at what a difference 20 watt makes over 10 watts on single sideband. It's true. It's double the power. It's half an S unit. That's good. But yeah, so I, I don't know. It was the way this image came across. No transmit, no power, no dimensions. Can't tell if it's the size of a 705 or 7300. Wouldn't be shocked to find it was vaporware. It looks cool, though. Now, what's interesting here um, is this image, right? And it, it was actually seeing it here on Reddit with this ghostly watermark over the top of it. Hypothetically, from my point of view, every one of these products doesn't exist that's shown. Sure, the Lab 599TX500 does exist, but the battery pack that's underneath it that has been rumored to being produced 
um, it, it doesn't exist, right? The battery pack, you, you can't get it now. I, I, I'm sure they exist. I just haven't seen them take money for uh, putting one in my hands, for instance, or the, the, the MP, the, the vertical handy talkie version of the lab, the, the TX500. So I, I think their, their, their comments here are justified. I just I just don't know what to say with any of it. But it made me did, you know, curiously want to start looking into some things. So I did go to the Lab 599 website just to see if they had anything. And and they they don't. They they do mention uh the TX five hundred MP, which again looks really cool. I think that's gonna be I, I think there's a ton of tactical operators that would love to have this radio with a battery pack, all that stuff, man portable type HF rig. I think that's gonna be very popular, but I haven't seen it. The battery pack as well, also not on the website here for Lab 99. You can go to Desert Wireless though, which is the buy now button over on Lab 599. 59 599. Yeah, that's it. And they do have a TX500 that you can purchase and it's in stock as well as some of the accessories, but again, no battery pack, no MP version. And then their Instagram as well uh, only has a, an image for the, the MP. Doesn't go into any greater detail. You can see that they haven't posted in, in quite a while. And um, again, still a good radio. And I have uh, nothing against the company. I just I, I don't know what to think about any of this yet. So some of my Google foo has led to not a lot of information when searching for it. So I'm going to leave it at that. It looks like an interesting thing, but at the same time, we don't know. If Lab 599 decided to come out with any of the things they've talked about, the battery, the handheld TX500, or this new base station, I think people are going to be really happy about it. So anyway, something to take a look at. I'll drop some of the links that you can check out, including the Reddit posts, so you can keep up with the comments there and the speculation, the ongoing speculation train. And leave your comments below on what you think. Again, I have a Lab 599 TX500, and I've liked it for as long as I had it. I bought it a couple of years ago at, at Hamvention from uh, from HRO when the Ukraine war was basically starting to kick off and I thought they were going to become unobtainium, which they kind of did for a while. Uh, but I now have it modified into that QRP base station, right? That really, really cool radio. So I that's perfect for me. That, that gives me 50 watts with the amplifier and the tuner, and I'm pretty much good to go. And for my kind of field expedient type of setups when I'm doing parks on the air or whatever, that radio works out really well. A base station? Don't know. Don't know what to expect for that yet, but uh, I would sure like to try some of those features like the ability to receive SSTV right on the screen there. Maybe I can click a little button and save some of my favorites as the, uh, the background for my display. Don't know. But wait, there's something I forgot. Going back to the website, and let's look at that image. The upper right-hand corner of the screen, just above the screen, says Wolf. And I remembered that there was an HF radio that was called Wolf, and it was all band, all mode. At least that's what I remembered. So I did a quick search for it, and sure enough, I was able to find something that was 100 watts, and it was on Banggood. So I pulled that up, and look at the display on this one. I can't really get a bigger version of the screen, but... Boy, howdy, that looks kind of similar to this, doesn't it? I am speculating really hard right now. And that is advertised as a 100-watt radio. It retails for about $1,200. And hey, look, there's eight F buttons on the bottom. Wonder if they could add a ninth one to that and make it uh, and make it pretty much the same. In fact, the UI, aside from that three-dimensional kind of Yesu-looking pan adapter, is the same thing. You got that bar above the pan adapter screen or the, the waterfall. And then that's where like controls are set. And then above that, that's like your operating frequencies. So I'm kind of curious if this is actually maybe, maybe a Wolf brand branded radio. Now, I, I should also make sure we're really clear. So this Wolf all mode radio was the UA3REO Wolf. I believe that is the operator who invented it. I don't know much more other than that. But yeah, you can get varying pri various prices on it. Oh, it looks like they go all the way down to 865. Interesting. And yeah, this advertises a transmit range of 0 to 200 megahertz and 360 to 408 megahertz. A maximum uh, power output of 20 watts on short band, 7 watts on uh, VHF, UHF. Some versions such as the Hamgeek RS988 have been modified for 100 watt output. Okay, so apparently there's different versions of this. Can you actually pull that up? 
Uh, nope, AliExpress. See some butts, though, so that's that's great. That's great for the video. But if you go back to Banggood, they're saying 100 watts. So, hey, there's definitely some speculation to leave you with. And now I really want to know what your thoughts on that last little drop I did. Because I thought about that right at the end. I was like, wait a second. I pulled up some other websites. What was that about? Oh, yes, that crazy Russian radio that was uh, 0 to 750 megahertz, 100 watts output. I have never seen one of those in the wild either, so I don't know what to make of any of this. But I'm still Josh KI6NAZ, and I'd love to get your feedback below. Leave your comments. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't, and I'll talk to you again soon. 73.